Now you have to realize that in North Carolina, it's a very unique place in the grape world. We grow European varieties. We could successfully grow them here. We can't just even a little bit south of us in, in South Carolina. And we grow some of the hybrid grapes. And hybrids are crosses between American grapes and European grapes for whatever reason, to get, to get them right for to withstand certain temperatures, things like that. And then you have the native grapes that have grown in this part of the world for thousands of years, the Vitus rotundifolia, that are also known as muscadine grapes. So we do a little bit of all three. So Yakin Valley is a very bucolic setting, so it's very rustic in a sense where, you know, Napa and some of the other wine regions, it's a lot of neon signs and highways and byways. Here you can pass through a residential community and hit a world-class winery like Irajola Winery, for example. So we started out with the white varieties of Chardonnay, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, and Viognier. Then with the red grapes, we, we did uh, all five of the Bordeaux grapes, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, Petit Verdot, Malbec. But we also planted Syrah, which is a Rhone variety, and Sangiovese, which is an Italian variety, experimenting in those regions to see, see what had done well. We are a little bit unique in Childress in that uh, if people go to Napa, they go to Napa for just for dry red wines. But at Childress, we have a lot of people here that would show up to visit that have never had wine, haven't had wine in years. So we have the ability to turn people on to wine. So the grapes that we grow here have been hybridized to tolerate the weather that is prevalent here in North Carolina. The wines that those grapes produce really run the gamut, and that's one of the reasons that we grow them here. So it can be a nice, crisp, clean white, and then we have Traminette, which is a beautiful white wine on its own, or it's a good blending grape. It's very floral. And then the Chamberson and Cynthia are the same way, so all the way from a rosé all the way to a port. So I would say our winery is defined by rustic elegance. So with the beautiful backdrop, the bucolic setting and Pilot Mountain in the backdrop, and the vineyards nestled in between all the guest seating, the fireplace, the stone, the chandelier clad tasting room, the stone top tasting bar. So I think it's a good combination of rustic but elegant without being pretentious. At Childress, the impression we wanted is that you sort of wowed right away and say, wow, I didn't look at this. Well, I didn't expect this here. This is, I would, this is like out of Napa or something like that. And that's what we want to do. We want from that moment all the way through the tasting. So we have great coordination between pairing wines with the winemaking staff to, to the kitchen staff that runs our everyday bistro to special events that we do through our banquet staff. And we try to do that in everything we do. The future of North Carolina wine, I see growth in lots of small wineries. I see growth in um, really these little sub-regions developing where you can get three or four wineries together. And that way we can get people traveling out of Charlotte, out of Raleigh. And you're starting to see groups of people come from Atlanta, people, groups of people coming from uh, Nashville. So that, that I think is the future. We've got a great future.